In Worldwide Exchange, as you know, we always take a global view. So what can we expect from Global Markets 2007? For more, we're joined by a friend of the show, Steve Previs, Senior VP, Jeffries International. Good day to you, sir. Hello, Daniel. Um, Steve, the world and his wife thinks that equity markets will continue to shine on the whole next year. There may, may be a, a little bit of a setback, but mostly higher again. Surely not the same kind of percentage levels that we've seen this year, though. Well, let's start from the bottom because I was always taught that the stock market is a discount mechanism. So we're discounting future events six to nine months in advance. The market now has been on a 45 degree angle going up for the last six months. So that's telling me that the people who have the best information are thinking, hey, this economy is doing much better than the bulk of the people expect. We're discounting now some pretty good economic numbers going forward for the next six to nine months. Having said that, um, I think short term there could be a little hiccup, nothing major. But what the market's telling me is earnings are going to look good, the economy's going to look good. So, Steve, Michelle here in the United hearing. States, does that mean long-term interest rates are finally going to go up in the United States? Well, contrary to what the popular opinion is right now, after what I just said, um, if the economy is doing much better than people originally thought, um, I think interest rates are going to go up and not down. The thing that's important here, I think the real issue, is that we don't have the transparency of looking at the money supply figures anymore. Because we don't see those money supply figures, it's the liquidity that the Fed is pumping into the market that's the important thing. If you recall back in the late 70s, early 80s, when Paul Volcker was the Fed chairman, the way he curtailed inflation and cut, the, cut back on, on uh, spending was he just took the money away from people. And as a result, interest rates went up to 18%, but if there was no money, you couldn't do anything. And I think that's the big issue here is how much liquidity there is all over the place. Remember the, the numbers we've talked about before, the deals that equity, uh, private equity funds have done, the cash balances of S&P 500 companies are higher now than they've ever been in the history of the S&P 500. Everybody's flush with cash except the consumer who's now reliquifying a little bit. So I think on, on bulk here, I think the, uh, the interest rates are headed higher and not lower. Does that mean then that you think the dollar is going to go up? That would also be contrary to what a lot of people think. Well, I think that's going to be a surprise for 2007. Um, you know, everyone keeps saying the dollar is going to go lower, the dollar is going, going to go lower, but that's not what's happening. The dollar is actually slowly ticking higher here. And I think it's because people realize that interest rates may, in fact, be going higher. The economy is stronger than people originally thought. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that um, the dollar might be the place to be uh, for the foreseeable future. Steve, hi. This is Christine all the way here in Asia. Are we going to see a return of the commodities rally in 2007? Well, I, I tend to take a pretty broad view of this, and, and I think commodities are in a secular bull market. I think we will see higher commodity prices. Uh, remember, oil prices led the way up. Now we're going to get the rest of these commodities starting to move. We had to move in metals. Now I think you have to keep your eye on soft commodities like coffee, cocoa, sugar, orange juice, cotton. The grain market, I think, is about to have another big move up. Uh, we're running out of food, and as long as there's global demand for these things, I don't see the commodity market selling off uh, in a big sell-off in a big way. Uh, just remember, there are still 6 billion-plus people and growing in the world. The demand factor is what's going to drive the commodity market. What about oil? Do you see oil scaling to new highs next year? Well, Yes and no. I think the possibility of a, uh, of a political event or a disruption of oil supplies could send the oil market skyrocketing. Apart from that, I think the demand equation is putting a base under the price of oil right here that's going to last for quite some time. And as countries develop and change bicycles for motor scooters and motor scooters for automobiles, I think you're going to see the demand for oil continue to grow, uh, whether we have alternative sources or not. So yes, I think the price of oil could continue higher. Steve, just finally from me, where do you think the riskiest area to be? Riskiest area right now, I think, would probably be the Soviet, or former Soviet Union, Russia. I think that's a place where uh, if you're going to invest in that country, you better be in very liquid investments, be able to pull your money out at any given time. I mean, the news on Sakhalin Island and what's going on over there with Belarus and things like that, that would be a pretty risky place to be right now. Very happy and healthy New Year to you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you very much indeed. We'll see you next year. Steve Previs, Senior VP, Jeffries International.